Hey guys, this is Poe with Let's Get Techie. Uh, we're going to do a follow-up video on the liquid cooling of our EVGA GTX 1080 for the win. In this video, we're going to discuss performance, uh, what overclocks we were able to achieve, temperatures, difficulty, will it void warranty, is it hard to do, what other options are on the market, is it worth the time and money, and would I recommend doing it. Stay tuned. Alright guys, the first thing we're going to discuss is performance. And I hate to be the one to tell you, but if you think this mod is going to drastically improve performance or frame rates, uh, it's just it's not going to do that. That's not what this is for. Um, so if that's what you're looking for, you probably need to stop watching now. Um, the difficulty, we'll talk about that. Uh, obviously I did a previous video on how to install the liquid cooler. The video is going to speak for itself. I will link the video down in the description, uh, so go check that out if you have not. Um, next, we're going to talk about warranties, and this will vary from company to company. Uh, some companies are completely fine with you disassembling their cards, others are not. You will need to check with your own manufacturer to see if it's something that they're okay with before proceeding. And now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the results that I got. Uh, we will go over frequencies, uh, temperatures, and then we'll talk about price or performance and see if this is something that's worth doing. Alright, so as you can see, in some instances we were actually able to hit a higher maximum clock, uh, but what I took away from it, and what is more important to me, is that we were able to sustain clocks much better after we liquid cooled. Uh, our max overclock I believe was 2138, uh, but we were able to sustain right around 2114 uh, after liquid cooling. Uh, again, this isn't something that makes a drastic difference in performance, uh, but the temperatures look great. Uh, overall, I'm really happy with it. Next, I'm going to show you a screen grab of all of the testing. Uh, this is going to show the maximum clocks, the settled clocks. It'll show some fan speeds, temperatures, uh, and it'll give you a better idea of what exactly we were able to achieve by liquid cooling the card. Alright guys, so I'm going to give you some of my final thoughts. Uh, one of the biggest things that I took away from this was price to performance. So if you go back to the slideshow that I previously showed you guys, uh, you can see that there are other options out there. Uh, those other options are simpler because they already come liquid cooled. They're cheaper um, because you're not having to buy the card and then the liquid cooler. You're not having to do that work. Uh, they come ready to go. So price to performance, I would give this an F. Um, is it worth doing? To most people, probably not. Uh, to me, I enjoy doing this type of thing, so 
when it comes down to it, I would definitely do it again. Um, but if I was trying to hit that price to performance, well, to be honest, if I was trying to hit price to performance, I probably wouldn't be messing with a GTX uh, 1080 to begin with. Um, but overall, I would definitely do it again. Um, so yeah, I think it I think it was a success, and I enjoyed bringing this content to you guys. Make sure you uh, stick around. We have tons more content coming. Uh, some of the stuff we have uh, going forward is the EK Predator, uh, that all-in-one customizable liquid cooler. I will be doing a video on that as well as the RX 480. Uh, it is a reference edition card. Uh, we'll take a look at that. Uh, and We also have the GTX 1060 Super Clock uh, that will be a giveaway item. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you get subscribed and I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks. See you next time.